This is John Brewer Reef. For thousands of years, the Waguru Kaba people paddled these waters, trading along the coast between tribal groups. These people had an intimate understanding of their environment and the seasons, and were known to be highly spiritual. Nowadays, the reef is home to some coral greenhouse sculptures, where culture meets conservation. This museum of underwater art by Jason DeCares Taylor was envisioned to inspire reef and ocean conservation in action, and we are lucky enough to be some of the first visitors to dive it. This is the story of a sailboat named Sylvia and the ragtag crew that call her home. Join us each week as we explore the planet both above and below the surface and see what it's really like to live a life at sea. This is Expedition Drenched. underwater museum, underwater sculpture museum that's uh, called the MOA and it is uh, Australia's first uh, underwater sculpture park nice. and we are going to be one of the first people to be able to dive it because they they put all these statues underwater um, about two months ago and then COVID happened and so nobody's been able to caught and dive it so we're going to go document it and yeah I'm pretty excited. Here is Magnetic Island here and we're just gonna head straight to the northeast about 30 miles to John Brewer Reef. Making some uh, some veggie pie. So I've got mashed potatoes. I've got my lunch, which was soup and lentils and corn and this, and that's gonna be the filling. Yeah. And then we have puff pastry left over. Yeah. So that's gonna be the pie. Making Lindsay's mashed potatoes, which you can find in our cookbook on our yeah. web page. <laughs> Check out the cookbook. Like and comment and subscribe. <laughs> I'm disappointed because I just lost in a board game, and I, I don't, now I don't know what to say. Been we were, we've been playing trains. <laughs> no, it's not even called trains. We just call it trains. It's called Ticket to Ride. Sponsor us. They won. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, uh, this is our first time on the Great Barrier Reef, and we've been here for two and a half months, and this is our first time actually on the Great Barrier Reef. We've been on reefs, but they weren't as great as this. This is the first time being on the Great Barrier Reef. All right, so we got this whole spot to ourselves. You can see the nice turquoise blue water. And we've been diving all day. It's been beautiful, 50 meters right outside, so about 150 feet. And then all of a sudden, this, this enormous reef just pops out of nowhere. And uh, we're on the very edge of it. And then we've got um, the sculpture park. We've got some ominous clouds coming over and a nice gentle swaying, rocking. I think I'm gonna sleep good because we've been diving all day and this place is gorgeous. You're missing some cinema magic inside. Matt's dishing out the mashed potatoes with his bare hand. Oh yeah? <laughs> yeah? I'm not afraid to get dirty. Put it in there. Put it in there. Yesterday, um, we decided we were gonna get up really early and go diving today, and nobody else is up yet. So I'm gonna go downstairs and just have a little, have a little look, see what everyone's doing, see if anyone's ready to get up yet. It's a bit of a mess right now because we set up all our our gear last night so that uh, we could be ready and just wake up and get straight in the water. But look, scuba gear. It's weird because we're in the middle of a little uh, barrier reef 
and so it's super protected. It feels like we're in a calm, protected bay, but actually we're just in the middle of the open ocean. I completely look around everywhere around us. There's nothing in sight, no land, no boats, just this really bright blue water, and then you can see the shallow turquoise spots of the reef, and it's super misty and gray, so you, it just feels like we're in like a little capsule, like our own little corner of the universe and it's pretty cool it's a pretty cool way to wake up Can't take my eyes off of you. good morning my sunshine good morning everybody's finally up Ready so to go. What's our, what's our plan for today? So we are going to free dive uh, the, the monument and the museum. So to figure it out where the, every statue is and then to be able to scuba dive it. Neat. And yeah, are you excited now? Yeah, I'm excited to see what they've built down there. Show me a moment never ending I wanna feel the infinite I wanna dream without pretending I wanna wake and not forget can't wait for the corals to start growing out of the pots that they have there. That's going to look really neat, like really inspiring. Nice. Yeah. Nice. nice. What do you think, Matt? Oh, it was amazing. What it was, was so it your cool. first time seeing? First time seeing underwater sculptures, first time seeing octopus, first time seeing cuttlefish. 
A lot of firsts. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of firsts. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, watching the octopus change color and shape and like, it swam right past fish. Or, it, yeah. The octopus swam right past cat and mm -hmm. I was watching her and the octopus and it changed into like, it looked like a fish. Yeah. And cat didn't even notice it at all. Wow. And then it came like towards me and then it changed into something else. Nice man. It's cool. Cuttlefish and an octo in the same dive. Those Amazing. are like the two alien species. It was seriously alien. Like it's, that on TV doesn't do it justice. That's cool. Yeah, for sure. Cuttlefish was way bigger than I expected. Yeah? It was huge. It was like this big. I was expecting it to be smaller. Oh. <laughs> it was really neat. Well, sweet. Let's do it. This is our first dive on the Great Barrier Reef, and it felt pretty great. Um, and it's, ba -ba -ba. And it feels weird to be like out here in the middle of nowhere, and there's just like, there's not an island, there's not land. It's just this reef that pops up from 150 feet down or 50 meters right to under the surface. It's just pretty crazy. And then to have mooring balls, which is like so nice. <laughs> it's just yeah. like, it helps me sleep at night. Not normally, I don't like moorings, but I went and checked this one out and it actually is like the best mooring I've ever seen. If you were commissioned by your hometown mm. and you were a famous sculpture artist and you were gonna make an underwater sculpture park that represented <laughs> your town or yeah. your life or something yeah. of your history, what, what would it be? Uh, so I'm from, I'm from, originally from Utah, Salt Lake City. Um, and so, I would have to say three things. Uh, pioneers, you Indians, but what I would probably go with is dinosaurs. Um, a little unknown thing is my grandpa is a famous sculptor himself, um, and he's sculpted all sorts of crazy things, but what he's most famous for is he sculpted um, life-size dinosaurs. And actually, like his dream is to open a dinosaur park. To this day, there's dozens of life-size dinosaurs that are in a city called Vernal, uh, Vernal. Which, which is like the outskirts of Utah, and uh, that's where all of my, my grandpa's dinosaurs are. So I would have to say dinosaurs. I mean, that would be that would be so cool. An underwater, it'd be like the scene in Pee Wee Herman where they go to all the big dinosaurs. But underwater. Oh man, if that if you could make that happen, think about a stegosaurus with big like fan coral on it or something yeah. like that, or a triceratops with like freaking I don't know like Elkhorn coral. Or, that'd be really cool. So I'm gonna go with dinosaurs. Well, with that said, I'm gonna ask you the question you've been asking everybody. So, where are you from? Well, I I was born in Minnesota, but I identify as being from Kansas because that's where I grew up pretty much from third grade all the way through high school. So I was thinking about it, and I would probably do a Wizard of Oz underwater scene oh. with the yellow brick road and all the different characters and the big emerald city Munchkins. and Munchkins, <laughs> and then Peanut would be there too. You have like the flying monkeys. Yeah. And the witches. There's a lot of, I mean, the Wizard of Oz theme would leave you with endless possibilities underwater. And I feel like it's a pretty, it would be pretty sweet. I would dive it. I would travel many miles to dive that for yes. sure. A Wizard of Oz theme park. Here's a little secret that a lot of people don't know, even my good friends. And I don't know if you can show this on YouTube or not, but I was obsessed with Wizard of Oz books when I was little. And, and the movie, of course, and I actually have a tattoo of Ruby Slippers, but the place, it's not scandalous on its own, but it's pretty, it's pretty close to another spot. <laughs> Am I supposed to show that? Yeah, I got a little, I have a little Ruby Slippers tattoo that's close to my, my lady zone, but you can show it, I think, okay. carefully. Oh. Yeah. There's no place like home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. That was my first tattoo when I was 18, the ripe young age of 18. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On to the next one. Okay, Matt. Yeah. Same question. Same what's question. Your, what's your sculpture park? My sculpture park for Maryland, where I'm from in America, is probably have a big shrine to Old Bay. And what Old Bay is, is a spice from Maryland, and um, it's good on anything. So it's like a really big thing in. Um, would you have there. sculptures that represent the food that you put Old Bay on? Like a bowl, yeah, like yeah, a bowl and what you would do is like you dive down with the little can and then you would like sprinkle it on each one. <laughs> and then so you'd have chicken and you'd have 
crabs, and then you'd have uh, popcorn. Popcorn, and then you'd have what other stuff we put on? Veggies and shrimp, and really anything. You can have statues of anything. Matt's mustache. Yeah, yeah it Grizzle, would be like a little, a little mustache. Old mustache. Uh, uh, yeah. Concrete mustache. Nice. Yeah. I, I dive that. Yeah, you dive that. <laughs> yeah, I know you. <laughs> hey, Toto. Hey. Okay, same yeah. question. What's your sculpture park? But what's my sculpture park? Yeah. Actually, I I I thought before I had in my mind to build a sculpture park in my hometown, and uh, I thought about what kind of sculpture will be there, and I really would like to have like a Basque mythology. Uh, characters or gods, statues, especially the main god is a woman uh-huh. with a dragon or something like that. Is she the, hot? Yeah, it's, of course, it's okay. a beautiful <laughs> woman with a, with a dragon. And also I would like to build an uh, underwater Basque medieval castle. Huge one! Yeah. That would be nice. <laughs> that would be really cool. It's uh, the, the Maiden of Amboto. Oh. What's her top? skills or what does she do? Uh, he destroys and creates everything in the world and she makes storms and he also uh, controls the animals and the nature. That's the main. I want to be friends with her. Yeah, yeah me too. It looks <laughs> interesting. <Yeah. laughs> Good evening. Oh, you're looking very and lovely and during this sunset golden hour I must say. Yeah, I, will. I was pretty chill actually after being the whole day in bikini, so I was like, I need, I need my super expedition drenched tank top, well, crop top or whatever you want to call this. Uh, peanut shirt. <laughs> peanut shirt. <laughs> okay, I have a question for you. Tell me. If you were going to make an underwater sculpture park to represent, like, if your hometown commissioned yeah. you and they said, Nerea, build us a sculpture park, what would, what would you come up with? I mean, the first that comes to my mind, I guess I thought said it. That would be like Basque mythology or something related to that. Uh, but I think I will, I will support a little bit of feminism, and I will do a, a women park like Marie Curie, Amelia Earhart, or Frida Kahlo, a woman that actually made a his, made history. I, even like. I don't know, like Einstein's wife. I guess that she will have done everything for Einstein, actually, not, not him that much. <laughs> so, yeah, I will do cultures in like the normal size, their, their size, and like having a little plaque. You say plaque? Yeah. Having a little plaque with a little bit of information and when they were born, when they died, and what did they do. I think that will be cool to learn, like a lot of. Uh, that will be a, a good school trip, actually. That's, that's what I was thinking, maybe. Yeah, yeah. that's a really good idea. Yeah. Well, I'm from California, and we um, are really known for the Golden Gate Bridge and the Hollywood sign. Maybe do a grizzly bear or state animal, maybe a sea otter. Um, yeah. Maybe like a grizzly bear with the little director's cut walking across. <laughs> Crossing Hollywood the sign, crossing the bridge with Hollywood <laughs> in the background. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would dive that park for sure. <laughs> Next week on Expedition Drenched, we sail to Hitchinbrook National Park, a spectacular uninhabited island just off the coast of mainland Australia. Area. What's the name of the reef that we're going to? I don't remember. John, John Brewer. Ah, uh, John Brewer. <laughs> 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 they laugh at me because we can, like, one of the mo- like, most hard words in the world is brewery or brewer <laughs> and for us it's just uh, uh, we it seems like we have a rah, rah, rah. we've been like drinking for hours and it's not it's not funny like it's a- good morning sunshine good morning how are you today i have a mask that's very good okay. i'm the only one filming like filming so i'll go film a duck outside all right let's go <laughs>